Life Audio. Hello. Thank you for listening to Your Daily Bible Verse, the podcast that examines one verse each day to learn more about God and His will for us. I'm your host, Jennifer Slattery, and after this short word from our sponsor, we'll dive into today's Bible verse, Isaiah 48, 18. Is life feeling chaotic? I get it. I'm Rachel Wojo, host of the Untangling Life podcast. Don't miss the passionate encouragement and faith-based resources you need to help you clear your head and calm your heart. As Shell says, it feels like Rachel always knows what I need to hear. She keeps it real and is so humble. Her podcast is just the cherry on top. Enjoy Untangling Life with Rachel Wojo on lifeaudio.com or your favorite podcast app now. The Historical Jesus Podcast is the sweeping saga of the life and times of Galilean Jesus of Nazareth, as well as the faith, religion, and church founded to honor and disseminate his acts and teachings. Join me, Mark Vinette, on this fascinating journey through time, exploring the many great works of Christian theology, literature, architecture, music, and art inspired by the words and deeds of Jesus Christ. Today's Bible verse is Isaiah 48, 18. If only you had paid attention to my commands, your peace would have been like a river, your well-being like the waves of the sea. We've probably all experienced dark and painful seasons during which we knew we had landed in a mess of our own making. And I imagine many of us have also celebrated the opposite, hardships and crises avoided thanks to following his lead. When our family first moved to Omaha, Nebraska, we all fell in love with a particular house in a particular neighborhood. The only problem was that the price was at the top of our budget. But still, from our perspective, it was manageable. The problem was our perspective was limited. We didn't know a major financial hit was just around the corner, but God knew. And he directed us to buy a different, less expensive home that enabled us to meet that unexpected financial difficulty we later faced. Our Father faithfully guides us towards thriving life. God, the perfect, all-knowing, all-powerful creator of everything that exists, our Redeemer, the one who knows us intimately, who loves us deeply, and who pulls us out of the pits we've fallen into, he guides us for our benefit. Today's verse and the one before it remind me of God's words recorded in Jeremiah 29, 11 to 13, where we read, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. While there are numerous powerful promises in that short passage, I want to call our attention to his heart revealed when he said that his plans were to prosper and not to harm us, to give us hope and a future. That means his every whisper, directive, nudge, and request will always, always lead us in that direction to a hope-filled future. When, like a trusting and well-cared-for child, we respond with humble obedience we begin to experience all the beautiful gifts, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, wholeness, promised to us through Christ. And this is God's heart for us. And it was his heart for the rebellious and sinful people during the prophet Isaiah's day. Can you sense God's longing in the beginning of today's verse? If only you had paid attention to my commands. As 19th century Bible scholar Alexander McLaren wrote, this is an exclamation of disappointment, of thwarted love. Jesus conveyed similar heartache in Matthew 23, verse 37, when he said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you. How often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings and you were not willing. 
If only the Israelites Isaiah spoke to had known and trusted God's heart, then they would have gladly followed his lead. And had they followed his lead, their peace, their shalom in the original Hebrew, their healing and wholeness would have been as abundant and constant as a river that steadily flows, and their well-being like the powerful, constant waves of the sea. God promised his people life, but they chose death, death of joy, of relational health, of peace, and ultimately spiritual death, which is separation from God, the giver of life. As apologist Tim Keller wrote, most fundamentally, shalom means reconciliation with God. And this relationship, this ongoing connection with our Father and Redeemer, it impacts every area of our lives. It implies more than a relationship with Him. It's also living reconciled to life as He designed it. And the more we align ourselves with His ways, the more we experience His shalom deep in our souls and our relationships. We experience progressive healing and transformed thinking, where we're more apt to love and respond to others freely and without defense or offense. Can you see how increased wholeness within, which can only come through our dependence on and connection with Christ, in turn leads to increased wholeness and therefore joy and fulfillment in our relationship with others? When we consider this, the question arises, why do we tend to resist God's leading? Scripture and experience reveals most often We resist out of fear. We see this in the Israelite journey from Egypt, the land of oppression, to the promised land, the land of blessing, provision, and protection. Although God showed himself faithful and faithfully present again and again, the people often rebelled out of fear. Many of us have that same tendency. The longer the journey, the harder it feels to trust. And when we find our trust challenged, our feet tend to slow, to halt, or to veer off the largely unknown path that God's leading us on and onto one of our own making, one that maybe feels more familiar, more predictable, or safer. The good news is, once we recognize our fear rather than faith is leading, we can always stop and return to God. And when our fears begin to rise up, we can actively, prayerfully choose to hold tight to Him and His promises, reminding ourselves again and again that he is leading us for our benefit to a place of wholeness, well-being, and rest. Let's pray. Holy Father, help us to see your heart. Help us to know your heart, your character, to trust your promises, to know that you truly do have our best in mind. You lead us for our benefit towards increased peace, increased wholeness, increased joy. Thank you that you love us so much that you want us to experience the peace and joy that can only come from you and living in alignment with your will. When we are afraid, Father, help us to turn to you. Remind us of your promises. Help us to remind ourselves of your promises and just to rest in your presence because in your presence is fullness of joy. And when out of fear we turn away, Draw us back. Bring us right back to that good path that you have marked out for us. And remind us again and again and again and again that your heart is for us. We thank you that you love us so deeply. You are so attentive. You are so faithful. You are all-knowing. You're perfect in wisdom. You're matchless in power. Your understanding is infinite and your presence is constant and again we just pray that you would remind us of those things and give us time throughout our day throughout our week to pause and to reflect on all the ways that you have shown up for us in the past all the ways that you have lovingly and faithfully guided us may we reflect on your faithfulness more than we ruminate on our fears And it is in the name of your Son, our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, that we pray. Amen. Your Daily Bible Verse is a production of Life Audio and Salem Media. If you liked what you heard today, 
please take a second to rate and review this podcast in your favorite podcast app so that more listeners like you can find the show. For more faith-filled, inspirational podcasts, visit us at lifeaudio.com. Hey everybody, I'm Dale. And I'm Tamara. We're hosts of the Kainos Project podcast. Where we help you tackle ancient Christian truths in everyday settings. To learn more and subscribe, go to lifeaudio.com.